Infinite of Code 2024, Day 25, Code Chronicle. This is OXDF. Uh, let's take a look at the challenge. Um, basically, I've got keys and locks. And so they're going to give me, uh, my input's going to be a bunch of blocks, uh, grids, where with separated by empty lines, and a key, I believe it's a key, let's see, is the one that starts at the top. Let's see. Uh, the first, oh, sorry, the lock has uh, pound signs across the top, and then it's kind of a typical tumbler lock. Um, where I get a height of the uh, of the lock here. So in this one, for example, the height is zero, then five, then three, four, three. Um, and you can look at the keys. Keys are all pounds across the bottom, and they line up like we can say this one is. I guess for some reason we ignore the bottom row. The numbers don't actually matter. Um, and this one is five high, zero, two, one, three. And I need to parse all these locks and keys and figure out if the key fits in the lock. Now, one thing that threw me when I, I, I solved this on Christmas day, um, but I'm coming back to do the video now, I've deleted the folder where it's gonna start over because it's a pretty easy one. Um, one thing that threw me is we are looking for how many pairs of locks, lock and key pairs exist where the key fits in the lock. It doesn't have to fit exactly, it just has to fit. So I don't have to make it find exactly a zero and a five line up um, as long as the total I guess I can say, if, you know, in the in the system they're using, where this is five, um, the total has to be uh, five or less. Um, you could also say, it's, I look at this actually seven, where just the one is automatically filled in, and the one is automatically filled in down here. Um, it doesn't really matter. Just But anyway, so we need to parse through all of our keys and all of our locks, and then compare all the keys to each of the locks and figure out which ones fit together. Um, so, jump over here and do this. Uh, I will run gen day for 25, and I better grab the example input because that's what we're going to work off of. So grab this here and come back and put it in here. Uh, we can look at our puzzle input, see how much we're dealing with. We are, you know, we have a lot more. You know, there's like several. You know, it's four thousand lines, um, less more than like seven lines per. So let's just say, let's just say it's eight per. So we still have like five hundred keys and locks there, five keys or locks to deal with, but nothing huge. We can we can manage. Um, what are we going to read it in? I'm going to read it. I'm going to want to read this into blocks. So we're just going to do f.read.split on double new line. So I have each uh, inputs, I guess, because I don't know if they're locks or keys yet. And now I'm going to want to, I'm going to want to separate out and sort of create a numerical representation for each lock and key. So I'm going to say items equals, and we're going to just define, um, my trick is going to be, I'm going to define this as the, I already forgot, I think it's the locks, and uh, this is the key. Basically, I'm gonna base this off of the top left value in the grid, and that'll tell me which um, list to put it in. Now we can say for grid string in inputs. Uh, now for each one, we're gonna say, um, if you think about working in columns is actually quite tricky, um, so I wanna make them work in rows. And so I'm gonna use a trick here that I've used before, um, where we are going to do zip on star grid, and I'm going to explain this in a second. Third string like that, dot split on new line. What is this going to do? So I'm going to have this grid string, right? And grid string to me is going to be, um, like, let's just put a breakpoint here. I will F5. Um, I have a video that shows how I set up um, the debugging for this, which I'll include a little link to. Um, so we're at this point. And now I can say grid is equal to uh, grid string. And so it's literally uh, the one long string with new lines in it. If I do a uh, split on new line, now I'm going to have these different items. But I still want to look on columns. And so what's cool is if I do a, if I run zip, what zip does is it takes the first item out of each input. So if I do zip on all these, It'll take this one, this, this, the first one is the pound, then a dot, 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 then a dot. And then it'll, that'll return that as one item. Then it'll take this for the next item from each item, or the next value from each item. So it'll be pound, 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 dot. Um, so effectively what I'm doing is I'm taking, I'm getting the columns. Um, and so if I take what this splat operator, the, the star says, take this list and put it as individual arguments into the zip function. That's effectively exactly what I'm looking for here. And then I just turn it into a list and I get the columns. And so we can see, if I take this, 
it does exactly that. Um, it doesn't join them into strings, but you can see I have pound all the dots. I have pound lots of pounds there. It's exactly what I laid out here before. And now I've got each of the columns as their own thing. Um, so now what I can do, let's see if I call it, if I call that grid, is I can say items of grid sub zero sub zero. So I'm gonna get the top left one. That's gonna tell me whether if, because that's always going to be a pound in the case of, I think it's a lock and a dot for a key. So we'll say that dot append. And now what do we want? What do we actually want to cal calculate here? And really what I want to know is how many, um, I mean, in theory, they're always all pounds until they're not or all dots until they're not, but really we just want to count. Um, so we can do len, let's see, we want to append, we're going to append a list here. And this list is going to be, we're going to loop over um, r for r in grid. So we're going to loop over each row in the grid, or I guess it's really a column at this point. Uh, maybe I should call it column. And then for each one of those, um, I'm going to loop over the column. So I'll say in here, I'll say, uh, or the row, sorry, row r for r in c. And we're only going to want this if r is equal to pound. And then we can come in here and say, what is the length of this? And that will give me the numbers that I'm looking for. So in fact, um, that'll give me the numbers of pound signs in each column. Let's rerun this. Let's see, I'm going to go to here. If I rerun this and show back here, if I now just take this right here, go and paste it here. We can see we get the numbers one, six, four, five. five. Now, in the in in the example input, that's the very first um, one. So that should be that'd be one. This is six, four, five, four. One, six, four, five, four. Now they call that lock. Where is it? They say that's zero five three four three. So um, we could. There's a couple things we could do. We could do minus one here, and rerun this. Um, let's see. I guess step. Um, uh, okay, I'll just grab it. Tweak this right here again. Uh, debug console. So now I've got the numbers they got. Um, I also could just adjust later when I'm dealing with this. Um, and that's what I actually chose to do. So we're going to get rid of this. And um, but effectively, you can see if I run to here, take this breakpoint out, run to here, I'm going to end up with debug console items. I will have an items has two option, two sets in here, and there's in this case. Uh, one, two locks and three keys. Again, I might be mixing that up. It doesn't really matter. Um, and we can see the numbers here and that will line up with what we have. Okay, so what do we do from here? Now we just need to take every lock and try every key. So we'll say uh, part one equals zero. So we're just gonna count. So four lock in items of pound, four key in items like that. And now we just say if, um, let's see, what are, we going to what are we going to check? We're going to say, we're going to zip the lock and the key. So we'll say, uh, something for L comma key in zip that so we now are here. Now, what are we going to do with it? We're going to say L plus K and we want that to be less than or equal to seven. That means it fits. And now we can say all, so if all of this Let's not put a space there. If all of those are true, then we found a good one. And we can say part one plus equals one. We can get rid of you. So we're going to loop over every lock and key combination. We're going to check and see if they fit. If they fit, we're going to add one to our counter and we're going to print. Uh, we're going to delete this. And if we come here now and run, uh, let's get out of the debugger one. Python, day there, example like that. We get three. Try it out, check down here what we got. Um, we found three here. So if we come here and do it with our input.txt, uh, we get index out of range. Um, let's see what our index looks like. Do we use this? Input.txt. Uh, grid zero, zero does not work. We must have an empty. Do I need some stripping in here? Uh, let's. Over here, I'll change my debug to input LF5. 
and I'm failing here. What am I doing here? Let's see. Let's see what grid looks like. Grid is an empty thing. That's not good. Um, let's see. Input.txt. I bet it's I, I bet it's this right here at the end. Um, so what if we split? Uh, we might want to list map string dot strip. Oops, that should be a function. So I string dot strip to each of the items like that. Try again. Come here and see if we still have that problem. Nope, we did not. That was the problem. So there was some white space that was floating around in here. Um, anytime you're dealing with splits and things like that, um, basically all I'm going to do here is just strip is apply the strip function, which is going to move trailing and leading white space to each item in the each block effectively, and then map returns a generator. So I got to turn it back into a list. Um, and now uh, I already showed it works. Um, I think we could, sh yeah. So um, that's actually it. If I come over here, um, part two, of day, as is typical on day 25, part two just says, uh, basically, if you've collected the other 49 stars, click here and you can, you know, get your 50th star. Um, we have our calendar here with all 50 stars. And uh, I guess the, it's the 10th year of Advent of Code. So, um, pretty easy one today um uh, thanks for hanging out with me this year if you enjoyed this series um uh, thanks for, thanks for sticking with me and let me know if this was a uh, useful content to you um thank you so much for hanging out with me and i'll talk to you next time bye